Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about SQL injection in Entity Framework Core. So I had a video with Entity Framework Core and there I used inline queries to create, update as well as get some information from database. Now for that video, there are a few things which I did in the right way, which should not introduce any possibility of SQL injection. Whereas there are a couple of places, the way I did it would potentially have SQL injection issues. So first I'm going to go through and discuss what I did right and what is the right way of doing it to avoid SQL injection. And then the couple of places where I did not do it right way, I'm going to update those and show how to do it the right way. So the first one I wanted to show is the employee creator. Now in employee creator, I am here using a inline query, but I'm using SQL parameter to pass the parameter to execute raw SQL method. This will help with the SQL injection. When we pass the parameter, and as you can see in the definition that if we pass the parameters, then it will help with SQL injection vulnerabilities. For the deleter, similarly, I have used SQL parameter and I have passed the parameter to the execute raw SQL. Hence, it will handle the SQL injection properly. The employee provider, I am using the out of box way provided by Entity Framework Core using DBSet. Hence, in this case also, it will be handled properly. And for this class where I'm using a store procedure, again, I am using it the right way. Though, as you can see here, I am not passing SQL parameter, but I am using the overload to pass the parameter into from raw SQL. And what Entity Framework does is when this overload is used, it converts the parameter passed here into DB parameter. Hence, the SQL injection will be avoided. Now I'm going to show where I did it wrong. The first place where I did it wrong is here. As you can see, for ID, I am passing SQL parameter, which is the right way. Whereas for first name, I am doing uh, string interpolation. So there is every possibility of introducing SQL injection in this case. The next place where I did not do it right is where I did the inline query to get an employee. As you can see here, I am using again string interpolation, which can potentially introduce SQL injection. I'm going to now go ahead and fix both of these. So first let's fix the inline query for get. Now this is a very quick fix. What I'm going to do is just going to go ahead and change this implementation to this. Get rid of this dollar so that there is no string interpolation. I removed the address column from the table so I'm going to get rid of this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the ID as a parameter which will automatically be converted into the DB param by Entity Framework Core. So this is the right way of doing and it should work. And now if I go to the main method, I'll get rid of this and what I can do is I can say var provider is equal to new of employee provider with inline query. That's what we updated which takes the employee context. So I'm going to pass the context here. And then if I do employee equal to provider.get and for the ID, I'm going to pass an ID from the database. So if I show the database, this is the database table I have employee, which has ID, first name, last name, home phone, cell phone. And if you have not seen my video on entity framework, I'm going to share the link in the description so you can go and check it out there. Now I can do I'm just going to install the latest version of Newtonsoft. I'm just going to serialize the object and print out the JSON format of the employee so that we can see everything. So now I'm just going to run this project. And if I run it, I can see the ID, first name, last name, home phone, cell phone, everything as expected. So this is the way we can avoid SQL injection. And then let me go ahead and update the employee updater as well. And here, just like ID, 
what I'm going to do is get rid of the string interpolation and I can pass first name as at the rate first name and here I can have a array of SQL parameters first one is ID and the second one will be the first name first name and this will make sure that we don't have any potential of SQL injection now here I'm going to change this implementation instead of provider I'll say updater and I can call it as employee employee updater and then update and it changes the first name and I can say new first name and this is for this ID so from some other name it will be new first name and it's a void so we don't have to do anything uh, I don't need this so I'm just going to run it I have to fix this here I don't need the single quotation it was a leftover so now the code is executed and if I go to the database and execute I can see the new fast name showing up here as expected now let's try out sending a query which would potentially cause some damages so we can say just say name and then we can terminate the query and then we can say truncate table employee now if we execute this go to the database the first name will be changed to name and nothing will happen because the SQL injection has been taken care of but if I just go ahead and change the code back let's go and change the updater but before I change the updater let's put a comment here so that anything after this truncate table will be commented out because here we have a where ID is equal to ID we don't want that to be executed so let's change this back to what it was so string interpolated first name let's get rid of the first name here ID can remain I think it's fine yeah now let's run this code the code is executed now let's go back to the database and execute and the entire table is truncated so that's the danger of passing first name or anything which is string essentially as a string interpolated query like this but if we just update it to parameterized query then anything we pass to the program is not going to impact the database which so earlier so now let me again do an insert into this table so I'll just insert through the management studio so we created an employee now the employee ID is back to one now if I go back here I say one and again try to execute the same query the name will be updated to name and then the truncate statement and the table will be intact and that's what happens so that's all I wanted to cover today this was very important as I missed a couple of very important points during my previous video and I wanted to make sure that it doesn't create any confusion if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel thanks so much for watching this video